Okay, so let's start, guys. Hello. This is working. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Okay. Okay, guys. So good afternoon, everybody. So, as I told you before, what what we are gonna do from now until the end of the semester is somehow different from what we did before. What we did before, or the objective of the chapter one and two is to understand how programs are executed by the hardware, okay? So you learn it assembly, you learn it uh, memory, how the memory looks like, uh, you learn it when you write your program, uh, whatever language you are using, Java or Python, whatever language you are using, okay? At the end, it has to be converted to assembly, machine code. The machine code is written in the, uh, in the memory, uh, you, now you understand uh, how how we execute programs. Uh, actually, microprocessor has to use different uh, registers like PC. Also, in the last lecture, I explained stack. I explained how subroutines are executed, how branches are done, okay, and so on, okay? So the second part of this course, the objective of the second part is to, to, to mainly focus on how can you program microcontroller, okay? How can you create embedded system systems, okay? So it's gonna be somehow different from what we did before, okay? So that's why, as I told you, starting from the coming lecture, we are gonna use this board, okay? We're not gonna use, uh, we're not, I said in my last email, I just wanna make sure you understood my email. Number one, we're not gonna use simulator anymore, so, any program we are gonna write, you are gonna run it by the microcontroller. This is a microcontroller, it's a chip is here, okay? This is number one. Number two, one, you are not gonna use the template project anymore. The template project we used to before, okay? And instead, I sent you, uh, what you have to do is that, uh, uh, you, this is actually our chip here. This is chip is our microcontroller, this is chip. You have to connect it this way, as you see here, okay? And you have to connect this one to your computer. Once you do that, uh, you should you should see you should see this you should see this chip in in the uh, in the device manager. You know the device manager of your uh, Windows. So if if it is good, because you know there are many reasons you may not be able to communicate with the microcontroller. Okay, one of the reason is. Your windows cannot, uh, or this one, your windows cannot see, cannot see uh, the microcontroller, okay? So the first thing you can do is that after you connect this one to your computer, if you go to the device manager, you will see uh, it's written there. You can see this one, it's already there, okay? Um, okay one more thing I want you to understand. Uh, let me go to the slides here. I told you this is the chip. This is a microcontroller we are gonna use. This one here, this, this one here, okay? So here in this one, this one has a microcontroller is here. It has some circuits around it. This micro, this is chip, this is small chip here, guys. It's a complete computer system. It has PC, it has uh, flash memory, it has RAM. Okay, it has a processor, it has buses, everything I explained to you before. On top of that, it has some systems like serial communication system, analog to digital system, and so on, other things. All of that on in this chip. Okay. So after you write your program, your program has to be converted to machine code, okay, as usual, but it has to be stored here in the flash memory of this one. Okay. So now tell me. What this board is gonna be used for, this board. So you are telling me everything is here in, in this, is it chips, that's true, everything is here. So why you are using this board? Very simple. All what this board is doing, just to connecting, connecting this device to these pins here. That's it. So as, as I'm gonna explain. So when I explain here, for example, is this pin, pin number one, two, three, four, five, five from this way, so five, so one, two, three, four, five from here, what this board is doing is actually connected this one to one LED. That's it. You understand what I'm saying? So this board just 
is just connecting some input output device to the microcontroller. Okay, guys. So now I ask it the uh, same Sylvester, the TA, to make a tutorial about from now until the end of the semester how you are going how how you are going to connect uh, this port how how you are going to use it. And I wa I wish before you come to the lab on Thursday, I don't want to spend too, too much time in the lab connecting the uh, the board to your laptop. I wish if you can do it before you come. Okay, so I just first of all before before I continue today's lecture, I'm gonna go through the tutorial I I posted online. Make sure you are, you understand everything there. Okay, so what we have to do. Uh, actually, thanks to Sam, he did a very good job explaining everything here. So what what we are gonna do in it in addition to the kill to the kill compiler, the compiler we use every time. In addition to this compiler, you are gonna download uh, this uh, this uh, program or this library. What this one is doing, okay? Uh, uh, this actually is uh, uh, what this one is doing. This one actually is gonna uh, once you download it, this one is gonna be linked, as you will see right now. How it is linked to kill? You get what I'm saying? Just download it, and then uh, you are gonna run your program from the kill, but you are gonna find it there. If, if you go to kill now, you're not going to find it there. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to download this one first. This one actually is going to download some software so that when you create a new, new project, okay, uh, this one can be used for many, uh, many, many microcontrollers with different numbers, okay? All of them are uh, STM32, but there are many, many of them, different numbers, right? That's why you have to select our specific microcontroller it has a specific number okay as, as i'm gonna explain to you okay so this one is gonna it's gonna it's gonna put some uh, 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 functions uh, some initialization code that we are gonna use in our library it's gonna create some kind of a library for 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 this microcontroller okay so first of all you have to go to this link okay so and then you have to follow you have to follow these steps so that you can download, as we see here, you have to download this one, uh, 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 STM32 Cube MX. Okay, you have to go all the way until you have to download everything this way. Okay, guys, any questions so far? Okay, once you download it, after that, if, if you wanna run a program, you have to go to kill, and then you have to create a new project. Okay, but before before you do that, before you do that again, the point here, or maybe this little bit, it's not confusing, but this is a reality. Okay, guys, look here. This program can be used for many, many chips. You got what I'm saying? So what they do, they are not gonna download all the chips. They are not gonna, they are, otherwise your program is gonna be too big. You got what I'm saying? So you need to go there, as, as, as explained here, and you, you need to ask, I wanna download this chip or this number. You got what I'm saying? Because this one can be used for many chips. So I don't need, I don't need, I does not need to download all of them because I'm not gonna use all of them. Okay, whatever you need, you have to ask for this one to be downloaded. That's why here, um, we are telling you here, you have to go to here. Once you come here, you can see this one here, this uh, icon. So you have, you have to click on this one. Okay. Once, once you click on this one, uh, wh wh why you are doing this one? Because you need to download the software, okay, for your chip, for our chip, okay? This is the number of our chip, STM32L0. Uh, uh, STM zero here, uh, zero means uh, um, M0, because I told you it, it comes with family. We have, we have uh, uh, M, M0, we have M1, we, we have uh, M3, M4, and so on. So it comes with family. So in our family, we are using uh, M0, anyway. So this is a specific number. It's even written here. If you if you can read it on the chip, this number is written. Okay. So all what you have to do, yeah. You after after you click, after you you click this one, guys, you are gonna see something like that. Okay. So you have to write here this number. Okay. You can see here all devices. So you can see here this one can be used for many many chips. Okay. But you just write here the, uh, our chip. Once you do that, you you are gonna. Uh, you, you are going to see it here this way, and then you need to install 
you need to install some uh, some of, because we are not going to use all of them for sure. So you need to download some of, some of them here. You need to install some of them. How this is this is what you need to download. Okay, this one and this one, this one, this one, this one. You can find all of them here. Okay, so make sure if they are not downloaded, you have to make sure you download all of them. Okay, you know. Uh, once you do that, so now you are ready. So two things now you have to do, guys. Number one, you have you have to download. Uh, you have to first. You have to install uh, this program. This one is again. This only the first time. Only the first time. Okay. Uh, you have to download this one. Also, you have to download. Uh, you have to make sure. Uh, uh, you have to download the software of of this uh, of our microcontroller here. Okay. Now, you now your program. Uh, now your program. Your you you can start. It's ready now. Okay. So all what you have to do, guys, is that you have to make project, new project, okay? You have to program project and then you select new project, okay? Once you do that, it's gonna ask you what name, you can write just whatever in the name you have. And then it's gonna ask you to select, it's gonna ask you to select the number of your project. Again, you can search here or you can, you can click but you have to select this number because this is our microcontroller. Very serious, very important. Because if you select the wrong number, it may not work. You know what I'm saying? Because every microcontroller is different. It has different pins. It has different architecture. You know what I'm saying? So you have to make sure either you write the number here, you can select, you have to select this one. Okay? So here you want to make, you want to create a new project for this, for this microcontroller. Okay? And then after that, uh, you are gonna this window is gonna open for you uh, in this window window again um, this window you can select whatever what, what, whatever you want to use again the idea here is that it doesn't as a program does not download everything because it, uh, you don't need everything right so here once you come to here you have to select for example you are not going to use dsp so don't select it okay so you have to select this one this is a core 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 processor you have to select this one so that your project is gonna download the software you need for for this one also here under device under device you have to select stm32 you can see this one because you download the program once you download the program you will see this one here you have to select this one you have to select startup Okay, and also under this one here, you have to select this one. Okay, any questions? Once you do that, once you do that, okay, the key program will automatically will automatically pull pull this program as you see right here. Okay, so here. So once you this, so you are gonna get this this window here, and then you are gonna say start, STM thirty two Q Cube Max. Is that okay? What this one is gonna do. Once you click here, start, what this one is gonna do, this one is gonna create, as I told you, uh, some uh, software, li 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 libraries, you will see all the libraries there, okay? It's gonna create all, all the li li libraries you need for your, uh, for our microcontroller. So you have to click on this one here. Once you click on this one, so kill, kill program is gonna open, it's gonna open this program here, okay? Here, this one is gonna give you. So you can you can try to navigate these things here, okay. Um, but I don't recommend to do any changes here, okay. So this one actually is gonna give you. Uh, it's gonna tell you. Uh, do you wanna you wanna create this system, and you wanna do. This is the default initialization. Default initialization. I don't recommend to change them, okay. But you can, if you want, okay. A part of a part of the initialization. So once you, here in this window, you can select the initialization. For sure, this is some something somehow advanced. Uh, for example, I give you one example. A part of the initialization is what is the clock speed you are going to use. This is something you can program the clock of the system. You got what I'm saying? And high clock, high clock means the the, the soft the your microcontroller is going to be faster. However, however, it's going to consume too much energy. You understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't, it depends on your application. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not a good idea to have very high speed clock. 
right? Because I don't I don't need too much speed because I'm gonna visit the cost of this speed and more energy, then if it's more energy. So anyway, so you can you can try to navigate whatever here, okay? But everything here is this this is how the system is gonna be initialized. Initialized, okay. And by the way, this initialization is somehow close to the initialization I'm gonna explain in the lectures. But this is initialization to the system itself. To the system itself. Initialization to the clock speed, to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to everything, okay, here. But, uh, so, and this initialization actually is done by just you write, you, you write some values to some registers, similar to what I'm gonna explain in the lectures, okay? But again, this is for the core system, okay? What I'm gonna explain in the lecture, how can you program ports? How can you program timers? Okay, but anyway, so what, what this part based on this based on based on this uh, initialization, this program is gonna create li li libraries, it's gonna create some software and put it in the key. Okay, so so once you come to here, again you can select whatever you want you want to have in your uh, uh, in your initialization to the system. But again, I told you don't 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 change them at least for now. And then you can cl click here, generate code. Okay. Once you click generate code, so this program is gonna generate uh, some uh, C or some libraries, okay? And then it's gonna put them under K. You will find them in K, okay? So let's see. Again, it's, it looks, it's not difficult, okay? So anyway, so once you click on this one, yeah, so after here, yeah, look here, the code is success, successfully generated, okay? You can just close, close this one. And then after that, you can, uh, you can go to, you can go to your, pro here is, uh, if you go to kill, you will find this message from kill. This message is telling you, uh, this program generated some code. Do you wanna import this code to your, your program? You have to select yes. Once you do that, look here guys, this is your, this is the kill. You will find there are some files here. These files are came from here, okay? You will find them here. Okay, guys, any questions? Okay, so you can find them here. And then here you can see, you can see min.c. In under min.c, this is where you have to write your program in, uh, in min.c. Also, if you open, try to open, you see what files have it here. You, again, you will find it has some functions and uh, libraries generated by uh, by uh, this program, Cube, uh, this Cube Max program. Okay. Um, and then what you have to do is that what you on the course website, I I I posted every program I'm going to teach in chapter three. I tested them. I make sure they are working, 100% they are working. So all what you have to do, you can try them, okay? All what you have to do, just here under main, you can, when you open main, delete whatever there, delete whatever here in main, and then copy whatever in the course website, just put it here. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm, what I'm posting on the course website is, is whatever in main. You understand what I'm saying? So if you go to the course website, you will find a lot of programs. All what you have to do, if you open one file, copy whatever is there, just put it here in your class. I've done it. Is that okay? You can ask me, or someone can ask me. So you are telling me, okay, or, or let me clarify something here. Number one, every time you create a new project, do I need to do all these steps? Okay. My answer is that for sure you don't need, this is only one time, this part or the previous part even, yeah, this one is just one time because once you download it in your computer, it's gonna stay there. So you don't need to do this one. Or oh, this one only one time, okay? This one also one time. Once once you put in your kale, this device is gonna stay there one time. Is that okay? What you have to do every time, if it should be from here, create new project. And then after you create a new project, you have to go this step. You have to select your processor. And then you have to do this one here. And you have you have to do this one. You have to do this one. You are, okay, you, you can do that, you can do that. So every time you create a new project, you, you do this, okay? However, to make it easy, easy, 
Once you have a project in your computer, you can use this project as a template. Okay, what do you mean? All what I mean is that, and that's what I did personally, what I did is that I created a project. Is that okay? All what I did, I opened this project, okay? And then I go to main, it change whatever there is gonna run. You got what I'm saying? So again, you don't need to create every time you create new project. You don't need to do that. Once you create one project and it works, all what you can do, just to open this project and just to change whatever it is. It's very easy. Any questions? That one more thing also, guys, you have to do here. So again, I, I wish you can just, you have, you have programs on the course website. I wish that you can, you try to connect to the board, make sure it is working. If you have any problem, you can email uh, Sam, Sam Sylvester. You can also copy me in the email, that's okay. Uh, you have programs on the course website. You can just run them, okay? Especially you have flashing LED. Uh, some programs, you need to connect here uh, wires, okay? As I'm gonna explain to you later, but at least you have the siren, siren program. You have some programs, uh, you at least try to make sure they are working, okay? I don't, I don't want you to spend too much time on Thursday, just figuring out how, how you connect it, okay? One more thing, you, you also need to do some, some changes here in the configuration, okay? Again, once you do this one in one project, it's gonna stay there, right? So, so that's why I'm gonna show you what you have to do and why, okay? But again, once you do it in one project, it's gonna stay there, and then you can reuse this project for different programs. And th I think that's an easy way, right? You don't need to create a new project. You don't need to every time to uh, to uh, to create uh, or to do all of that. You don't, if once you have some project, you can use this project as a template. Is that okay? Anyway, so you have to click on this one because you have to do some configuration here. You have to click on this one here, as you see. Once you click on this one, there are several important things here you have to do. The first thing you have to do, as you see here, guys, uh, here, this one under debug. So under debug, here is asking you how you are gonna connect your, how, how you are gonna connect the program to the microcontroller, how you are gonna do it. So here you have to select SCT link debugger. Is that okay? Very easy. You have, if you don't select this one, if you don't see select this one, it's gonna give you error. It's gonna tell you, I'm not able to communicate with your uh, microcontroller. Is that okay? So you have to make sure you have to select this one here. Also, under, I think you have to click on setting. So after after you select this one, you have to click here on setting. When you click when you uh, when you do this one, you have to you have to uh, you have to select here under uh, uh, preset when you connect so that. Is this one, every time you connect, it's gonna preset, it's gonna do reset to the system under reset. Also, you have to select a flash, flash download here. In flash download, you have to say, say reset and run. What, what this means, and if you don't select this, what, what will happen? Okay, I'm gonna tell you what happens. What you are seeing here, every time, <coughs> every time I download a program, every time, every time I download a program, please reset and run run it, you got what I'm saying? If you don't do this one, if you don't do this one, you have to download the program and then it's not gonna run. In order to run it, you have to, you have to disconnect the controller and connect it again to run it. You got what I'm saying? There is no way, no need, no need to do that. So here you are asking every time I download, you can see here, download. Every time I download the program on the, on the chip, please, uh, reset, reset it and run it, okay? So that every time I, 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 I write on the chip, you are gonna run the program right away, automatically right away, okay? So you have to select this one here. Uh, after that, everything is okay. As you see, as I told you here, guys, in the main, you can see the main here, under this main, under this main, all what you have to do, as I told you, just remove, remove whatever is there, and then you have to write, you have to write, for example, my programs, at least I start with my programs, make sure they are working and then you are gonna modify them, okay? Uh, anyway, so once you do that, guys, once you write the program here, similar to what we did before, you have to click on this, this one first, compile, you have to compile, you have to link, similar to what we did before, you have to do this one and you have to do this one, that okay? 
after that, I, if, if there is no error, if this one is okay, this one is okay, no error, forget the warning, okay? Warnings are not important, or most of them are not important. So anyway, so as long as there are no errors, you have to do this one first. You have, to, what we did before, you did this one first, and then you did this one, and then you clicked on debug. What we are gonna do now, what we are gonna do now, you are gonna do this one and this one, and now you are gonna click on this one. Once you click, what this one is gonna do, but you have to make sure no errors here, no errors. What this one is gonna do, this one is gonna download the program on the chip. Okay, you can see, you will see it is written, flashing, it's gonna uh, uh, flashing the chip. So here, once you click this one, so this one actually is gonna, it's gonna write to the chip, okay? And it's gonna work right away. Any questions? By the way, if if you need to do debug, still this one is correct. You can you can click on this one. Still this one is okay. You okay? And actually, look look here. If you write your program in C and you click on this one, you will see the the assembly version. The, the, you are gonna see the assembly version of your program. You are gonna see memory. You are gonna see uh, all, uh, all the registers similar to what we did before. Is that okay? But anyway, if you wanna do debugging, but again, if your program is correct, that's okay, you just click on this one in order to download it on, on the board. Any question, guys? Anyway, uh, try to do everything here. It looks uh, too many things, but it's not difficult. Once you do it again, my advice to you to make everything uh, easy, just to create one project, okay? And then, then you can keep using this project. That's it, you can keep using it, okay? And actually, that's what I did, what I did, I created one project and then I write a program here. Make sure it's working. Once it's it's working, I saved I saved min.c and I boosted it in the course website. And then I wrote another program. Make sure it's working. Then I repeat the same thing. Okay. You don't need to create every time you, you don't need to create a new project. Any question, guys? And again, the reason we need this uh, cube uh, cube max here because this this one actually is gonna download. You I want you to open this file, look at this file, you will see. There are a lot of initialization there for the system, for the fabric system. Uh, it, it has actually some, it has also some functions. It has some functions to use, uh, uh, to, to use the uh, microcontroller. However, however, I will not depend too, too much on these functions. Why? Or maybe I'm gonna use some of them, but not all of them. You know why? I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's just I use the function. You are not gonna learn anything. I'm gonna tell you, if you wanna use 40A, just to code this function. If you wanna do something, just to code this function. But you are not gonna learn, you are not gonna learn how, how it is made, how you did the initialization, okay? Because you need to learn, for example, if you wanna use 40A, you have to do initialization. What kind of initialization we have to do and why? You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, it comes with several functions, but I'm not gonna depend much on these functions, okay? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do the initialization by myself. Okay, or by ourselves, you are gonna write a code for that. Okay, because you are not gonna learn anything if I tell you just to call a function. You got what I'm saying? And again, also to make programming easier, as I'm gonna explain uh, today and next time, just even the initialization itself, I can make initialization by writing the code, and then I can put it in my own function, and then I can call it, or just to make everything easier, as you, as, as you will see. Any question, guys? Just to do your best, try to make sure it is connected. And then if you have any problem, just co uh, contact uh, uh, Sam Sylvester and you can copy me in the email, okay? Any questions? Okay. Okay, any questions? Okay. And by the way, once you write the program here, so this can work by, by itself. It does, you don't need to kill anymore because the program is already written here, even even if you just connect this one to power, to the power, not to computer. If you connect it just to any USB, sorry, any any power, okay, the program is gonna work. You got what I'm saying? Because the program is coming from here. You 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 are disconnected from cable, right? So you don't need uh, your laptop anymore to run the program once it's written, okay? Anyway, so today, any questions? So last time, guys, okay, what, what we're gonna do in this chapter, okay, what, what we're gonna do in this chapter is, this chapter is about interfacing to a microcontroller. What this means? It means 
here, as you see here, guys, microcontroller alone, it's a complete system. That's totally fine. What do you mean by complete system? It means it's a memory. It has memory. It has permanent memory. It has flashing memory. So it has, and I told you before, even this was a question, I think that I asked it in several places, okay? Any embedded system should have some kind of permanent memory, right? So that uh, you, can run, you can run this program at any time. Okay, so uh, even if you disconnect the power, still the program is there. Okay, so this one, uh, it has a RAM, uh, it has a complete system. Okay, and it has more things, it, uh, more than um, uh, more than what I explained before. Like I told you, it has some subsystems. I'm going to explain some of them. It, like for example, it has a timer system. It has analog to digital converter. It has too many things inside this little chip. Many things. Very interesting. Okay, but again. This is chip alone, it cannot be used alone, right? Why? It's, it's similar if, if you have your laptop, but there is no screen. If you have your laptop, but it doesn't have a mouse. If you have laptop, but it doesn't have a keyboard. keyboard. It, you can, it, it's useless. You got what I'm saying? It's exactly the same thing here. That's why we, what this chapter is about, what I'm going to explain in this chapter, how can you, we have here, as you see, LEDs. I'm going to explain, this LEDs has to, connect, to be connected here. Okay, so I'm going to explain how can you use this LED. I'm going to explain how can you use the seven system. How can you use uh, LCD? How can you use the push buttons here? How can you use the buzzer to make some sound? Okay, how can you use the keypad and other things? Okay, so here that's why it's good interfacing to a microcontroller. And again, similar. If you want to use your mouse, you have to connect your mouse to a port. Okay, this port USB. The USB is a port. Okay, exactly same thing. So here. Uh, this microcontroller has two ports, okay? Maybe other microcontrollers has different ports. By the way, that's what I want to tell you. There are different types of microcontrollers, okay? But, for example, this one has two ports. Maybe if in your capstone, you are going to use a different type, but all of them have the same idea. It's the same idea, but maybe different number of pins, uh, different ports, but all of them almost the same idea, okay? So, anyway, so here... I told you if you if you if you have any input output device you have to connect it to a port. You have input port, you have output port. So, and I even tried to give you some idea about about what do you mean by port? Because now you have hardware, you have electronic circuits. Okay. So even I tried to give you some idea. Actually, the purpose of any port, we need some kind of a hard hardware circuit, electronic circuit so that you can connect your device here to the internal system. You have internal system here. You have a processor, you have RAM, you have ROM, you have passes, because actually now, so that's why you need ports here. So that the processor can send data to one of the ports, or processor is gonna read from the port. So, so there are some circuits here. This circuit, is, uh, this circuit actually is gonna connect the input output devices here to the internal system. Is that okay? So this is so this, so this port is here or this this electronic circuit are inside here inside inside the chip okay uh, and I told you uh, so as you see here guys for this processor we have two ports we have port A as you see here and we have port B okay again in other processors maybe if you have you have a bigger processor maybe you have more you have more ports you don't have any ports it's just A and B is that is that okay every port every port has number one external pins as you see here this is where you have to connect the input output devices okay so for example this one here you here in this what this this picture this port is too simple this the whole the 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 the, the, uh, the complex the complexity is here but this all, all this port is just pretty simple all this port actually is going to connect this pin to just uh, this one and put some resistors as i'm going to explain later and so okay so what i'm saying here is uh every port it has external pins as you see here external pins also also another also every port has a number of registers and you have to program these registers in order to use the port 
you have to do some kind of initialization or you have to program the port before you use it. What kind of programming? Just wait. I'm going to explain details what, what I mean by pro, what you mean by program. But what, at least what you learn from now, every port has pins, external pins, and also every port has a number of registers. And before using any port, you have to program this port. Okay, I'm going to give you more details. Um, but how, how, how you are going to program a port? Very simple, very simple. Every register, every register, you have to write some bits, one zeros, one and zeros. That's it, as you will see right now. So you have to know, uh, you, you have to know what, what data you have to write to the, to the, which register you have to use and why and what numbers you have to do. That's it. So as, as you will see, that's what we're going to do all the time, by the way, all the time for all, for everything we will do that. You have a register, I'm going to tell you this bit, you have to put one. This bit, you have to put zero. Why? I'm going to tell you what for sure, but that's what we're going to do all the time. Just you have a register, you have to manipulate some bits. And you also you should understand by doing that, you are actually doing some changes to the hardware. You are doing some change internally. So once I put, once I write in this bit one, this one is gonna do something in the hardware. That's why we call it init. You are actually initializing initializing the hardware. As you as I'm gonna give you more details for sure. More thing, another in, important thing also I explained last time, guys. Although although we call it we call it registers, they are gonna be different from the register we used to before. They are not similar to R zero, B C, or something like that. We're not going to use names. Okay. They actually, we are, we are calling them registers, but actually, they are more like memory locations. Memory locations. You got what I'm saying? That means we're not going to use name for these registers. We're going to use addresses. You got what I'm saying? And even I made it clear last time, uh, as you know from the beginning of this course, we have here, uh, we have. 32-bit uh, addresses. Your address is 32 bits. That means we can have, this is the whole range of addresses we have. We have addresses from 0, 0, 0 until F, 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 F. That's, that's what we have been doing in the whole semester, right? This is the whole addresses we have. But actually, actually, I'm not going to use the whole range for memory. That's, that's what I want to show here. Actually, for, for flash memory, we are going to use from here to here. This is for flash memory. So your code has, this, your program has to be here. This is your program. Has to be here. Okay. Again, someone can ask me, how you came up with this one? Okay. I, I didn't come up with, I didn't make it, right? The manufacturer. So if you search online about your chip, you will find the manufacturer did it this way. This is what we call memory map. Is that okay, guys? So only this part of the whole range is going to be used for your program has to be here. For RAM, this is the range of your RAM, starting from 2000 until 3FFF. So your RAM is here. Okay. What about the whole range? What about the other, the other addresses? The other address can be used for several things. For example, as you see here, guys, you can, you can connect external RAM if you want. We're not going to do that for sure. But if you want, you can collect external RAM, okay? You know what I mean by external, right? Here we have internal. Internal means inside the chip itself. If you want, you can connect external RAM, and this should be the range of this one, okay? And also, as you see, for this chapter, for input-output devices, I, as I told you, for input-output devices, every port, I told you every port has registers, okay? for initialization and to use the port. All of them are in this range. Also for the system, for the system, for the system itself, what do you mean by the system? I mean, for example, if you wanna program the clock, for example, okay? And other things, for example. So here for the, for the core system itself, also we have some, some addresses here, okay? Anyway, so at least in this chapter, in this chapter, we're gonna only all the addresses we are gonna be we are gonna use are here. Okay, guys. So let, very simple, very simple. What I'm saying is that this is similar to what we did before. You remember in the exam and everywhere. What what did we do? I told you, you have a memory location. 
okay? It's a word in this memory. I want you to change one bit in this memory location. That's, it. That's exactly what we're gonna do. However, we're gonna work on this in, 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 in this, this, this area, here. Not, not in the RAM. What we did before, it was, it was in the RAM, but now we have registers here. These registers, we're gonna use them to program the port before we use it, okay? Look here, I'm gonna, honestly, honestly, uh, you may feel like it's uh, too many. You, we have to do we have to do several steps for initialization. Okay, you may you may feel like it's yeah it's overwhelming. Okay, however, the good thing once you do the once you know how to do initialization one time, every time almost will be the same. Copy this. You can understand. So anyway, I'm gonna give you more details now. Any questions? You understand the big picture? The big picture. We're gonna do initialization. We have here a number of registers. So port A, port A has some some addresses here. Port B has some addresses. Port C has some addresses, and so on. For sure, we don't have uh, the what we need. And I'm talking about we have other processors. Okay. So here I'm gonna focus on general general purpose ports. You can tell from the English name, general purpose. General purpose means. Uh, you can you can connect to whatever device you want to connect. Okay, we have some we have some input output, but they are for a special purpose. Like for example, you have analog to digital. So inside the chip itself, you have analog to digital, and then you have you have one pin here. So you can input you can input here analog, and then you can convert it to. Also, you have here some some kind of pulse width modulation circuit. So you can find if I go back here in this one, you can find some pins here. Some pins are used for 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 some special functionality. Some pins can be used for general purpose. Some pins can be used for both. For example, look here. For example, here this one. So this one I can use this one as general, or I can use it for pulse width modulation. Anyway, forget forget. I'm gonna focus on at least for now. I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna focus on the general ones. Uh, analog to digital. So these pins also can be used for analog to digital as well. But anyway, uh, forget it for now. We're gonna, I'm going to focus on general purpose. Uh, okay, guys, any questions? Okay. The first instruction you have to write, okay, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to port A or port B, you have to enable, you have to enable this port before using it. What do you mean by enable? Okay. Enable means, uh, or what happens is that for every, we have two ports, ND. For every port, uh, we have we have end, end gate like this one, end gate. And you have a clock. This is a clock. And then you have one bit here, one bit, okay? As you know, if you put here one, so here you are going to have a clock. And this clock is going to go to the port, okay? In order for, for, for the port to operate, okay? If you put here zero, no clock. Okay. The initial value, once you reset, initially, initially, ports clock are disabled for two hours. So once you do reset, all ports don't have clock to set power. Okay. That and 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 thus, if you want to use any port, you have you have to put you you, you have to connect again. What we're gonna do, guys, is the following. We're gonna do is the following. I'm gonna tell you, we have we have a word in memory, in certain address in memory. In one bit, you have to put one. In one bit, you have to put zero. Okay? This is the programming if you point of view. If you want to look at the programming, again, just you have a word, some bits you have put ones and zeros. The hardware perspective is once you put one here in this bit. The hardware will do something. For example, here in this register, this register is called input output port enable register or IOPENR. This register, this register is, is stored in this memory location here. Okay. Here we have for sure we, we don't care about the other things. We may we may need them later. I'm only I'm gonna focus on what we need for now. What we need for now from this port is just the first two bits. Why? Because this bit is going to be used to enable port A, and this bit is going to be used to enable port B. Okay. All what you have to do if you want to use port A, if you want to use it, 
okay? Either input or output, all what you have to do, guys, in this bit, you have to put one. If you want to use port B, you have to put here zero in this bit. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. Why? Because there is the clock is not connected to the board. Also, you should understand, or you should understand, once you put one here, what this one is going to do? Actually, this one hardware is connected to uh, internal end gate. And by, by putting one here, the hardware is going to connect, is going to connect the clock to the port. Everything in the initialization will do something like this. You, you have a register or you have a war, you just put ones and zeros. And the ones and zeros you put, it's going to do something in the hardware to do the initialization you want to do. Okay, guys? So to make it very simple, again, to make it very simple, like if you want to use, if you want to use uh, port A, you have to make sure this one is one. If you want to, uh, to enable it, if you want to use port B, you have to put it here. If you want to use both, you can actually put one one. So now you can enable both of them. Any questions? The ha okay, how can you do that? Okay, it's very simple. So actually here, when you when you created a new project, okay, I told you this project is going to create some software. A part of the software, okay, is they are going to create a structure for RCC. Okay, RCC stands for reset and the control and the clock control. Okay, so if you go inside this structure, you will find there are different registers. All of them is going to control somehow reset and to con and to uh, co uh, clock control. For now, we only interested in this one for now. Okay, so that is why you have to say RCC and then do something like. So this is how we do it for any structure, okay? That means, and then you have to say I, O, B, E, N, R, okay? So if you do something like that, there is a variable. This one, it's like a variable, okay? So uh, all what you have to do, this variable should equal RCC, I, O, B, N, R, and then you have to put here OR, and then you have to put a number here, so that which pin, so this is which bin you, you wanna you wanna set, okay? So if I do something like that, so uh, and then the C language, this is a good thing about the C language, you don't need to worry much about numbers, about these numbers, because this is the this is the part also done by this by by the library you download. You download. So the library you download is gonna link. Once you write this one, it's gonna link this number to this number. Okay. So anyway, so what's gonna happen here, guys, uh, again. If, if I do something like that for this register, every time you want to use port A, you have to make sure you have to enable port A using this instruction. You can see here, if it is one, and again, this is a very serious thing. Someone can tell me, I can just write one instead of using OR, okay? Uh, this somehow may be very dangerous. Why it is very dangerous? Because if I say, please listen to me, that's an important thing. If I say RCC, I O B E N R equal zero 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 one. Okay, if I do this way, this is very dangerous. Why? Because you are gonna change the bits here. You are gonna change the bits here, and maybe these bits are gonna be used for some initialization for the system. You get what I'm saying? So this is very dangerous. You have to, you have only to manipulate the bits you are interested in. That is why, as you will see, all the time I'm gonna use or if I wanna. If I want to set some bits, I'm going to use or. If I want to clear some bits, I'm going to use and. So that I don't want to change the other bits. I only want to focus on some bits and I don't want to ch change the other bits. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why here, I what I did here, if you see this number, so what this one is going to do, it's going to be, you are going to do or with one, zero, 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 zero. So this one is going to set this bit, okay? If you want to set this bit, so all, I'm going to do two. Why? Because two is actually zero one zero 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 zero. If you want to enable both of them, if you want to enable both of them, so I have to put one one zero zero zero, which is number three. Okay, guys. As I told you, if you want to enable both of them, you have two choices. One choice you can simply use this one and then use this one. You can write the two instructions. Okay, that's okay. You can just this one is gonna write one here and this one is gonna write here. Maybe if you look at programming point of view, uh, 
uh, it's just you are using too many instructions. That's okay. It's not uh, okay. If you want to be very professional in programming, okay, uh, you can just use one of them and you can just write three. Okay, it's up to you. Any question, guys? So the e very easy. So every time you want to use port A or port B, you have to you have to make sure it is enabled. This is number one. If you want to do it in assembly, if you want to do it in assembly, so <laughs> that's very easy. We have done this one before. You have a memory location. In this memory location, I want to set this bit. That's it. So all what you have to do, you have to say, you, they have to put this address in R0, and then you have to read, you have to read this one, and then you have to put one in R2 and to, in order to do, to do OR, and then you have to store it back, uh, similar to what we did before. Okay. By the way, what I'm going to do starting from now until the end of the semester, uh, I'm not going to focus much on assembly. Okay? Uh, I will focus more in C so that uh, I can so that I can have some time to teach more stuff. But I'm going to show you everything I'm going to do in C. How can you do it in assembly? Okay, and it's not going to be difficult because all what I'm going to do in C number one for loops. Why loops? You already, in the last exam, I asked you about full loop. You know how to do full loop, why loops in assembly, right? Also, how can you set some bits? How can you clear some bits, okay? And if you are very interested in assembly, as I told you, once you write your program in C and you click debug, you will find your program converted to the assembly code. You understand what I'm saying? So anyway, so I will, I will do my best to see you if you want to do something in assembly, but I'm going to mainly focus on C. Any questions? Okay, so this is, if you want to do initialization, this is the first thing you have to do. Okay, now the second thing. The second thing is that we have a register, we call it mood register, mood register, okay? This actually, this register, okay. Now, as I told you guys, every pin, we have here input ports and output ports. Is that okay? What they did in order to provide flexibility, flexibility for us to give us flexibility okay every pin it can be input or output it's your choice so they are not they are not dictated you understand what i'm saying so they are not going to tell you these three pins are input these three pins are output it's not a good idea why it's not a good idea because it depends on my application it depends on my project maybe in one project i need too many inputs maybe in one another project i, I need too many outputs you get what I'm saying? So every port can be input or output, but you have to program it. You get what I'm saying? Just to provide flexibility for us. Okay? And I'm also, I'm going to give you an idea why it's important to program it. Keep in mind, guys, keep in mind, everything I'm going to do here has some impact on the hardware because input is different from output. If, I, if, if you have here something here, like an LED this way, this is output. So the the hardware, the electronic circuit, has to allow the current to flow this way, because this is output. However, if this is input, and you have here VCC or 5 volt, so it has to come this way. That's why I'm going to give you some details, but you have to understand why the circuit is different in case of input or output. That's why you need to program it, right? To connect the circuit in a different way. I'm going to give you some details for sure. Again, how can I do it? And again, that's what we're going to do the time, guys. Everything you want to do, we have some bits. I'm going to tell you, we have a register. I'm going to keep seeing it. We have a register. We have one bit. We have two bits. If you want to do something in this bit or two bits, you have to write one or you have to write zero. That's it. All the time, we're going to do that in the different initialization we're going to do in this course. Okay? Okay. So now let's come to the second one. So the second one here, guys, before you use any before you use any uh, pin, you have to configure it output or input, okay? What do you mean by output or input? I'm gonna tell you what I mean. If you have here, very simple. We have microcontroller and you connect a device here, whatever the device is. If microcontroller has to write to the device, this is called output device. If microcontroller is gonna read the value from the device, it's called input device, okay? For example, here, LED, LED, I have to write to the LED in order to turn it on or turn it off. Seven sigma, 
I have to write to the seven segment in order to display number seven, number eight, whatever. Uh, LCD, I have to write to it. Microcontroller has to write to the pin. Okay? And the pin is going to connect it here. If you are going to read the voltage, so in case of input, this device is going to put here zero volt or five volt, and then I'm going to read it. This is input device. In case of output device, I have a pin, external pin here. Microcontroller is going to put, is going to make this pin five volt, it's going to make it zero volt. So that if you connect here an LED this way, if you put five volt, you are going to turn it on. If I put zero volt, you are going to turn it off. That's it. So by the end of the, uh, what I'm doing right now, by the end of the initialization, all what we are going to do is that we have, we have a pin, OK? If this is output pin, I'm going to teach. Or in your program, I can write a program to put five volt here or put zero volt. That's it. By software, you can put zero volt or five volt here on this pin. And then this pin is connected to seven segment, connected to the, even the buzzer here, connected to the buzzer. That's how, that's how we are going to make some sound, right? For input, for input, you have a pin. And the five volt or zero volt has to come from the external circuit. So there should be external circuit here to put five volt or zero volt. And all the microcontroller needs, microcontroller is going to read, read it to see is there five volt here or zero volt? For example, as I'm going to explain later, we have a push button here, push button. Okay? If I don't print the push button, zero volt on the pin. So if I read the pin and find zero, zero volt, that means you are not pressing. You are not pressing the button. Once you press the button this way, the external circuit is going to put five volt. So once I read the pin and I, fi I find five volt is there, okay, that means you are pressing the button. Is that okay? By the way, Sometimes I say, I say zero volt means logic zero. So if I say logic, if I say this pin, this pin has logic zero, that means it's, it's, it's zero volt, okay? If, when I say, maybe it's more accurate to say zero volt or five volt, but just in case if it happens that, and I say this pin has one, logic one. Logic one means five volt, is that okay? Because this is a digital system. We're talking about digital systems. So all the time we're talking about only two voltages, zero volt or five volt, okay? Unless we have analog and this analog is gonna go to another circuit to convert it to binary. That's a completely different story. We're gonna talk about it later, okay? Anyway. Okay, guys, so now here, this using this register, you have to write the code to program the things which uh, here, uh, for example, I want to use one pin, okay? Or two pins, whatever. So here you can program. Yeah, I'm not going to program the whole port input or the whole port output. No, no. It's going to be pin by bit. So for this pin, so that means for the same port, one pin can be input and one pin can be output. Yes, you can, because I'm going to program it pin by bit. Okay? Very easy. So the story is every pin has two, two bits. Whatever you can write on these two bits, you can make it input or output. So for example, again, this one here, we have 30, 32 bits, okay? We have two of them, one for port A and one for port B. So we have two of them, one for A and one for B. Is that okay? For every one of them, these two are for pin zero. These two, so every pin has two. Is that okay? So if I want to program pin port A12, pin number 12, what should I do? I have to go to this register for port A because we have two of them, one for A and one for B. And then you have to go to, this is zero, these two bits, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have to program this one here, okay? these two bits. Okay? How can you do that? Very simple. Look here, guys. Very, very simple. If you understand, very, very simple. All what you have to do, look here, guys, it's two bits. So if in the, in, the, in the two bits, if I put zero, zero, so you want to program this one is input. Is that okay? You want to program this pin input. If you want to put here zero, one, so you want to program it output. So here, if, if I put zero, zero, so pins, this pin is input. If you put here zero, one, so this one is out. Is that okay? There are other things, but we're not going to use in, at least in this chapter, 
like alternate function analog analog mode and so on and by the way this is the default value so once you do reset so all of them are programmed analog uh, analog mode okay so again in this chapter we're gonna in either input or output so all what you have to do guys if i want to program one bit uh, as input you have to put zero zero if you want to program one bit output you have to put zero one is that okay any questions Okay, guys. Okay. And I told you we have two. We have two of them. One for port A and one for port B. This is the address of the one of port A. This is the address of the one of port B. Is that okay? Also, in in C language, they also they have uh, they have in C language they have um, uh, uh, structure. We have uh, structure. So here all that's what you have to use. Look here, guys. This is for this register, GBIO, okay? This is for port A, and then this register in port A. For port B, we have the same thing for port B. By the way, if you go to the software in the program, if you write GBIO B, and you write something like that, there is a menu is gonna open to you. In this menu, you can find a lot of registers under this instruction. For now, we are interested in this one. Any questions? Okay. One more thing, very important. Okay. So it's really, first of all, what I'm explaining here in this slide, again, as I told you before, guys, every initialization you are doing is going to have impact on the hardware, right? So I give you here some idea about what I mean exactly. For example, I give you here just. Again, it may not be in reality exactly the same thing, okay? But I just want you to understand if you put zero or one, this is going to connect to the hardware in a certain way, right? Every initialization or doom is going to have some impact on the hardware. For example, I just an example to understand what I want to say. Maybe every pin is going to have like two switches this way. This, these are electronic switches. So that if I put zero here, if I want to program this pin input this way, if I put here zero, so actually what this one is gonna do, you know, this is how this switch is working. If there is no bubble, if there is no bubble here, so if you put zero, it's gonna make it open circuit. If you put one, if there is a bubble, so one is gonna make it open circuit, okay? If you put here one, if, okay, you connect. And so here, this is like electronic switches. So I put him, I put here two of them back to back this way, so that, for any value you put here, one of them on, and the other one is going to be off, right? So if I put here zero, okay, in this bit, if I put zero in this bit, so actually, because I want to program this one input, for example, so here now, the electronic circuit is going to be connected this way. Yep. However, if you put here one, so I'm going to connect the electronic circuit this way, okay? So there should be some electronic circuit. So that the current has to flow this way. You understand what I'm saying? Anyway, I don't want to spend too much, much time on this one, but you should understand the concept of the idea. I don't care about specifically how it is done, right? I just care about you understand when you do initialization, you actually is going to connect the circuit hardware some in, in a certain range. Is that okay, guys? So now, again, very easy. Every if you want to program one pin input, all what you have to do in the corresponding, in the corresponding pins here, you have to put zero zero. Okay? If you want to program one pin, one bit output, you have to put what one zero this way. Is that okay, guys? Okay. Programming wise, how how should I do it? Okay. Again, there is a difficult way. Okay. The difficult way is you have thirty two bits. You have thirty two bits. Again. Uh, you have, it's not recommended to use equal, use assignment. To write some value, write it in the form. It's not recommended to do that, right? It's what you have to do, if you wanna, if you wanna program uh, a certain pin, you have to use or, or end the operation to manipulate only these bits. I'm interested in just two bits. So you have to, you have to give this bit, you have to set this bit, but don't change the other bits. That's why, as you will see, 
all the time I'm going to use end and or operations. Is that okay? Okay. So, for example, look here, guys. That means you are telling me if I want to put zero, zero, so I have to use end. Is that right? I have to use end. And in order to use end, that means I have to put one everywhere. I have to, so I have 32 bits. Okay. I have 32 bits, so I have to put one everywhere. And only the two bits I want to clear, I have to put zero, zero. Is that okay? And then you have to use end. Okay. Okay. Yes, you can do that, but I have a much easier way. Listen to me. I have a much easier way just to make programming easier. Okay. Again, what you can do, you can put one, one, one everywhere, and then you put zero, zero here. Uh, but again, this is going to be, especially if you are, it's going to be bit, uh, bit, bit number 11, bit number 12. And if you make mistake, if you just shift one bit, it's not going to work, right? So I'm going to tell you about a very smart idea, very, very easy way to do it. It's a very easy way to do it. Look here, guys. OK. If I want to clear, if I want to clear this two, OK, guys? I can put here 0, 0 as we agreed. I can just put 0, 0. Is that OK? This is pin 0. OK. However, if I want to do this one, I'm going to put zero, 0, but I can shift it one time. If I want a number 4, I'm going to put zero, 0, but I'm going to shift it four times. You got what I'm saying? So instead of looking for what value I'm going to put, what I, it's the way you are going to do it is, I'm going to put a certain number, and then I'm going to use a shift by, by the bit number. OK? So I'm going to tell you how, how we made it here. Look, look how I made it. Look uh, the way I made it. If you want to program BA5, BA5 input, okay? So the way I'm going to do it is, as you see here, I'm going to define a variable. For example, I'm going to call it temp. I'm going to, this variable is 32 bits this way. And then I'm going to read the register. So I'm going to read this, this register. And then I'm going to manipulate, I'm going to mani manipulate this register. And then I'm going to write it back. I'm going to write it back. Is that okay? By the way, I tried to write directives to, to uh, this location in the memory, but I got error. That's why it seems to me, seems to me, some locations in the memory you cannot write directly. Uh, sorry, you cannot manipulate the bits. All what you can do, you can just read uh, or you can write. Okay, that's why what I did here, I read, manipulate, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write. Anyway, for some some register, it was okay to just manipulate the bits directly. Okay, anyway, just very simple thing. So what I did here, guys, I'm gonna read the register of port A, okay? And then now, if you have this register here, look what I did here, guys. You remember, you know, you know what I did here? That's exactly what I explained in chapter two. In chapter two, when I told you, I wanna create a standard mess, right? And I told you, uh, in the standard mess, the bits I wanna clear, I wanna put one in this bit, right? And I told you, we have a problem. If you put one and the bits you don't know to change, I want to put zeros. You remember in chapter two, that's what I explained. I told you. But the problem and the gate, and and the gate has to be the opposite. And and the gate, the bits you want to clear, you have to put zero. The bits you don't know to change, change you have to put ones, right? And how we solve it, we solve it. And we, why, even it was in one of the labs, the way we did it, guys, as I told you, uh, we used and not. You remember back we use back not that's exactly what i did here so look what i did here guys what what i did for example i wanna i, I wanna clear these two bits so the way i'm gonna do it i'm gonna put here one one zero 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 this is my mask one one zero 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 because i want to clear these two bits okay however however i'm gonna use not you remember in c language this is not here not okay so and then you are gonna use end so here, what this one means, it means temp should equal temp and not, not of this one, okay? Not of the mask. This is exactly what we did in assembly in BIC. Remember BIC? It was and not. And instead of using and, I used and not. That's exactly what I did. Okay, guys? So again, the bits, the bits, the bits I want to clear, I'm going to put ones here in this bit, okay? Now, to make our, our, 
to make it easier. Look how, look how I made it, okay? So 11000, what it means, 1100, it means number three. This is number three, right? Now, if, if I wanna clear these two bits, okay, so it's, it's one one, that's it. What about if I wanna clear bin number one? So I have to shift one, I have to shift, I have to shift these two, two times in order to come to here. Let me go back. Look at the idea. Very, if you understand it, very simple. Look here, guys. If I wanna clear this two bit, I'm gonna put here one one. Okay. And then if I wanna clear this one, so also I'm gonna put one one here, but I'm gonna shift them twice. So them is gonna come to here. Okay, and then zero, zero here. Why you are doing this one? Just to make the calculation easy. You will understand what I'm saying now, right now. Okay, what if bit, bit number 12? Okay, the way I'm gonna get it is one, one, and then I'm gonna shift it 24 times. 24 times, which is two times 12. So this one, one are gonna come to here. So for any, make, make it simple. For any pin, pin number seven, I'm gonna start with one, one, I'm gonna shift it two times seven. 14. So that these two, two ones are gonna come in these two locations. You understand what I'm saying? Just to make programming easier. So in this example, to understand this example, guys, I wanna configure port A bin number five. So the way I'm gonna do it, as you see here, I'm gonna do three, but this three, I'm gonna shift it two times five. What if I wanna program bit number seven? Just to put seven here, easy. I'm gonna use exactly the same instructions so always I'm gonna use these instructions for port A, and here, this number here is gonna be the bin number, bin number. If, if I wanna program bin number four, I'm gonna put here four. I'm gonna program bin number seven, I'm gonna put here seven. 12 is gonna be 12, that's it. Just to make it programming easy, but you understand the idea. The idea is that I'm gonna put here one, one, and then I'm gonna shift it by two times the bin number. If I do that, this one, one is gonna come under the two bits of this bit. That's what I'm saying, very easy. So every time I give you a lot of examples here, uh, here, how can you program B A5? Okay, what about if it is port B, port B? Everything I'm gonna repeat it, but instead here using the structure of, uh, of A, I'm gonna use the structure of B as you see here. Let's, let's see this example. If I wanna configure B B4, as you see here guys, I'm gonna read, this register from uh, port B, from port B, I'm gonna read this register as you see here. And then I'm gonna clear, uh, I'm gonna hear bit number four. So I'm gonna put here four, and then I'm gonna write it back here. So everything here is exactly like this one, but instead of if using A, I'm gonna use B. Instead, in it, this one was pin A, so it's gonna be pin four, okay? Here, what if I wanna program, what if I wanna program, bin A and, and five, uh, sorry. Here, what I, for example, I wanna program BA5 and B, BA12. BA5 and BA12, okay. Again, you can do it in different ways, but I think the easy way to do it, number one, I'm gonna read the register and then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this instruction to clear, to put zero, zero in, in the two bits of BA5. And then I'm gonna use another instruction here, okay? To put zero, zero in the location of the two bits of pin 12. Once, once, you, okay? Sorry, this is output, okay? Forget this one. And then once you are done, you just write it here. Okay, guys? Again, if you don't like this, I think this is the easiest way. If you don't like it, you have 32 bits, you have to see which bit you have to clear, you have to make a mess. That's it. But it's a very easy way to make a mess. Okay? So all the time, make it, uh, last time I'm gonna explain it. If you have input, if you have input pin, input pin. So all the time, you guys, you are gonna use this, you are gonna use this one uh, for input, right? But all what you have to do, just to change this one to the pin number. If it is bin number 15, bin number 12, bin number nine, whatever, just to put the pin number here. And if it is A, use A. If it is B, just use B. Any questions? What about output? Okay, this is for input. Input, I need only one instruction here for input. Only one instruction. 
Why? Because two bits, I want to clear two bits. However, for output, one bit you have to clear, one bit you have to set. So I have to use and, I have to use all. So I have to use two instructions, not one. Here, you have to clear two bits. Let me go back, just give me one second, second to finish this one. What I'm saying here, guys, for input, you have to clear two bits. Is that okay? So here I'm gonna use, uh, sorry, and. But for output, I have to clear one bit. I have to set one bit. So I have to use two instructions. One for and, one for all. Okay? So what I'm, the way I'm gonna do it, guys, for example, if here, first I'm gonna use and to clear both of them. Then I'm gonna use or to set which one? To set, yeah, this the first one. I have to set the first one. Also, I'm gonna use the idea of shift. Idea of shift to make it easy. So let's see how we make it. Yeah, look here, guys. Again, I'm gonna read the register. As you see here, guys, I'm gonna use number three here. It's one, one. Then I'm gonna shift, shift them by the bin number times two, right? So this one is gonna clear the two bits, okay? This is the bin. This is if I wanna program number 12. And then after that, after that, I wanna I wanna set one bit. So here I'm gonna use number one, not three. I'm gonna use number one because only only one bit, one bit. So I'm gonna use one. And then I'm gonna it's the same idea. I'm gonna shift it two times twelve. And then here I'm gonna use or. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Again, very easy. You have a register, okay? Some bits I have to clear, some bits I have to clear. We agree with this, okay? In order to clear, you have to use N. In order to set, you have to use O. To make it easy, how can you calculate the, the math? To make it easy, all what you have to do, all the time, I'm gonna use this one. The only difference is that by this is the pin number. Just I came up with a formula, it's like a formula. Every time. If, so if you want to program bit number seven, just put your seven. If I want to program bit number eight, just put your eight. That's it. And use the simple. Why? Because simply, I need to, I don't need to see where is the ones, what is the number, you just here. Again, you put one, one, and then I shift the same. Okay, 24 times. So that it comes under the two bits I want to program. Any question, guys? So here I give you a lot of examples. For example, this is bit number eight in port B. So again, if you're comparing to this example, instead of A, I'm gonna use B. Instead of 12, I'm gonna use eight, okay? And so, again, if you look at the symbol here, it's just, just a register, you have to read the address, you have to manipulate it, you have to write it back, so everything is just easy. Any question, guys? So starting from next time, I'm gonna explain this one. Any questions? Okay, great. 